Space. The final frontier. We know very little about our neighbor planets, but every year we learn a little bit more. Did you know that there may be gemstones on other planets? There's even a good chance that there are diamonds on Mercury. But before we get into that, let's talk about our favorite red planet, Mars. While we have successfully deployed rovers to explore Mars' surface directly, we're going to talk about an orbiting satellite called a Compact Reconnaissance Imaging Spectrometer for Mars, or CRISM. This device uses a technique called reflectance spectroscopy to see the surface of Mars from orbit. It can detect minerals, signs of water, and gemstones. One crater in particular has a very interesting formation in the middle of it. It's a peak with high concentrations of hydrated silica, something you've probably heard of. It's opal. Scientists have discovered opal on Mars. Now, it's probably not gem quality, but that's not what's exciting about this find. This deposit could serve as an indicator of when and where water may have been on Mars. What's even more exciting is that opal on Earth sometimes has tiny fossils and other signs of biology trapped inside of it. So there's a chance that this Martian opal has evidence of life in it too. I'll take that discovery over gem quality opal any day. Further evidence of opal on Mars actually hit back in 1911. It literally hit. A meteorite known as the Nakla meteorite broke up in the atmosphere and fell around Egypt. About 22 pounds of material was recovered, and some of the 40 meteorite fragments had fire opal inside, proof that the mineral can form on Mars. And if Earth opal can trap microbes inside, then maybe Martian opal can too. Now for the good part. You've been waiting for this. There may be a ton of diamonds on the surface of Mercury. Mercury may be the least explored planet in the inner solar system, but there have been a few NASA missions sent its way. In 1974, Mariner 10 revealed that the surface of Mercury was darker than that of the Moon. Scientists suspected carbon, but it wasn't until 2011 that their hunch was confirmed. MESSENGER orbited Mercury for four years, which is really challenging considering how close it is to the Sun and its immense gravity. The probe revealed that Mercury was indeed loaded with graphite, which brings us back to diamond. Graphite and diamond are both made of the same material. Carbon. On Earth, diamonds form very deep below the surface, in the mantle, where it takes tremendous heat and pressure and billions of years to form. That may not be necessary on Mercury. Here's the theory. We have to go back four billion years. Mercury underwent a period called the Late Heavy Bombardment, when much of our solar system experienced a sharp spike in meteorite strikes. Mercury, like other planets in the solar system, was a hot mess at the time, with vast magma oceans at its surface. As the planet cooled, graphite may have crystallized into thick layers and floated up to the surface, which was, you know, being bombarded. Scientists wondered if a meteor impact would provide the heat and pressure necessary to transform the graphite into carbon. After simulating 4 billion years of meteorite strikes, researchers confirmed that, yes, meteors blasting into the ground at 10 kilometers a second can generate a pressure wave hot enough to turn graphite into diamond. But just how much diamond could there be? These simulations showed that if that graphite shell was about 300 meters thick, Meteorite impacts would have converted maybe 30 to 60% of the carbonaceous material into diamond, potentially creating, hold on, 16 quadrillion tons of diamonds, which is way more than there is on Earth. Now, with 4 billion years of impacts, it's possible that subsequent meteor strikes could have destroyed the diamonds created by previous impacts. However, the melting point of diamond is 4,000 degrees Celsius, so it's less likely than you think they more likely just got violently relocated. If that 16 quadrillion got you excited, I have some good news for you. Another probe called the Bepi Colombo is en route to Mercury right now, courtesy of a partnership between the European Space Agency and the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. It launched in 2018 and will reach its destination in late 2025. Why is it going to take seven years to get to a planet that's relatively close to us? Well, it's not exactly a straight shot. See, speeding up and slowing down in space isn't so easy, and the amount of fuel needed to use 
thrusters to accelerate or hit the brakes would make the probe way too heavy to launch. Instead, the probe takes its time and uses the power of gravity to slingshot itself around the planets of the inner solar system before it finally settles into orbit around Mercury, telling us more about the surface of the planet closest to the Sun. That's all for today, although I should mention that Earth is a planet, just like all the other planets, and technically anything that occurs geologically on Earth could potentially occur on another planet as well. I mean, all the planets have rocks, you know, after all. But it's still exciting to find out that your neighbor could have 16 quadrillion tons of diamonds. What color do you think they are? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our follow-up video in 2025. See ya.